we are going to take a look at older boats that either have been forgotten or that are still in play, but people don't really actually know what they are. Let's proceed to our first one today. This is our first victim, the Ericsson 35 Mark II. This is a nicely proportioned boat. This boat, I would venture to say, has won more PHUF races in San Diego than probably any boat. Like, how can that be? This boat has just been very well sailed by Benny and family. All right, let's take a look at this boat. One of the things you know from a visual standpoint, right away from looking at the boat, is just how clean and nice everything is done. It's got wide walking side decks, which is really a nice sort of thing. Not, not Nothing that encumbers your sort of path from the front to the back of the boat. And this is frankly one of the things I love the most about the Ericsson 35, and that is the cockpit. Ah, so I can sit here, I can lay here. In fact, I'm gonna lay here. I'm gonna take a little nap if you don't mind. Now let's look at a more modern cockpit and wonder what in the hell they were thinking. So this is a Beneteau 36.7, an otherwise fine boat, but look at how they butchered the cockpit. So I don't know, when I have a boat that's this size, I want to be able to lay down. Ah, oh, maybe get a little, oh wait, I can't. Oh, I can't. You had to put the traveler right here just to make sure that you broke up any chance of having a semblance of a cockpit bench. One of the things that's so interesting about this boat is you had a tiller option with the boat and the first boats, when they were raced, they had a tiller. Sounds great, right? Because steering with the tiller's just a better way to do it most of the time. Problem is, the tiller literally took up the entire cockpit. Before we go check out down below, take a look at these ancient instruments. I mean, these are classic. The signet, uh, this, in this case, the Kenyan speedometer, not meter, of course. Look at these modern speakers, but in an odd sort of place. But this, if anything dates a boat, it's certainly this. All right, now as I head below, let me introduce you to the first flaw, or the flaw as I see it. The companionway ladder here. Could it be any more vertical? I mean, it could be, of course, but hardly. So when you come down this thing, I mean, there's not much room for air. In fact, that's why they have this non-skid here, and you can see it's fairly worn out because it's just so steep. Why wouldn't they have just moved it forward, oh, I don't know, six inches? And just relax the angle so it's easy to get up and down? I don't know. But if I had one, that's what I would do, absolutely. Now, the first thing you notice with this boat is it is good size down below. Interesting that a, a low cabin house like this, and granted it's got some freeboard, can look so great and still have such good headroom. I mean, I'm not exactly the tallest guy in the world, but I'm pretty sure a six footer could probably get right through here, which is really, really nice. One thing I wanna show you that this boat has and most don't, this is what I like to call their I love me table. And they've got all of their wins, probably not all of them, but on display. All the beer can series that they've won, of course, opening day race last year. I'm sure there's a ton more at home, but not a lot of boats do they proudly display their beer can trophies. And there they are. Now it's set on, which is a really nice, good sized dinette table. And Plenty of people can sit around here. People can sit at the settee as well. And then when it's time for sleep, you drop this down. There's cushions go over. This creates into a nice double bunk. Very nice uh, single settee here. And I believe that you can, for longer folks, you can pull this off and you can stick your feet in there for a little extra length. So that's kind of a nice thing. A midget like me, not necessary, but just to have it, the availability to put somebody a little bit bigger in there. Decent size. You could sort of call this a very cozy double berth, I suppose. I'm probably a, a single, but I would guess it's been a double more of its life than it hasn't been. Uh, good size galley. I mean, the uh, the oven would go here. They have a stove. I'm sure it's all completely legal. Uh, but and why? Who needs a stove? That's sort of old school thinking. Sink, decent ice box, plenty of drawers. Motors under there. I mean, it's a really good layout. If we turn around and go forward, very standard four peak area for a boat of its uh, era. Uh, hanging locker here. You'll notice it's stuffed with a sail, of course. A uh, really good size head. I mean, it's nice, full of, you know, woodwork. It's all varnished. I mean, it's a nice 
easy to access headroom that's actually a head that's actually closed and we come up to the v-berth which is is most typical boats that race it's full of sails and um but again if you're gonna cruise this boat just pull this stuff out put it in the locker in the back of the car whatever suv you got a nice double bunk so a boat really that could truly sleep two four five six or seven seven max that's pretty nice for a boat of this era so that's the look at the ericsson 35 mark ii and let's take a final look at it. One of the things that really stands out and truly dates itself is this incredible bow angle. It's almost like a, you know, very old, it's a Viking ship practically. It's, it's crazy, you would never see a boat like that now, but that's what it was back then. And it was, again, one of the best looking boats that had ever come out. And quite honestly, given this cabin house, how low it is, how nicely Ericsson has done the windows here, like they've done in virtually all their boats. It does give itself a very pleasant look. It's a very inviting boat, and it's a boat that's easy to use, fun to use, and a boat that you can actually win races with. One of the things I wanted to talk about was the line of Ericsson boats. Let me see if I got this right. So they built a 23, they built a 25 plus, I think it was called. They had an Ericsson 26, an Ericsson 27. I don't know if there was a 28. There was a Ericsson 29. There was an Ericsson 30. And I think it was a Mark 1 and maybe a Mark 2. I'm not exactly sure. There was the Ericsson 32. It was a Mark 1 and a Mark 2. Ericsson 33. Ericsson 34. Ericsson 35. Mark 1, 2, and 3. Ericsson 37. Ericsson 39. Ericsson 41 and all of it culminating in their biggest boat ever, the Ericsson 46. That's a hell of a lot of boats, an impressive line of boats. And that is our first shot at our retro look on Sailing Anarchy. Boom, out.